Hello and welcome back to Tech Lab. If you've been following this channel, you'll know that I've only recently got back into building gaming PCs. Prior to that, it was a good 10 year gap, so I'd missed a lot. In particular, one of the things that I'd missed that I've been trying to catch up on is coolers. And this range here is the set of AMD Ryzen coolers that I've managed to put together. And I thought today we'd take a look at each one and go through the specs, see what they're like and how they work. So when I got back into building gaming PCs, I obviously started having a look at what kind of tech was out there. Now I realized that the AMD Ryzen processors were one of the latest things to come onto the scene and they were pretty good. I was even more surprised that their cooler range had actually improved a lot. And here we have the five different coolers that you can get from AMD. If we start at the lower end, we'll take a look at this. This is the AMD Wraith Stealth and it comes with a lot of the lower end CPUs from AMD, particularly the Ryzen 3s and some of the Ryzen 5s in the early models. It's not a bad cooler, coming in at a Profile depth of 54 millimeters is perfect for a lot of those small form factor builds or some of those budget builds that we've got out there. The fan on the top is a 92 millimeter, which provides plenty of air, whereas the heatsink is just a simple aluminium heatsink that's not very wide at all. The fan also only has five fins, but it does produce enough air to keep things nice and cool and if, particularly when you're looking at profile size if you take off this uh, ring that they put on with the logo you can actually drop another couple of mils i've used these on a number of builds including our super budget gaming pc so if you haven't seen those videos make sure you check them out on the channel as well as some of my smaller form factor builds when i built things into like xbox cases and things like that because they are pretty good as far as fixings go, they've included the screw type, so you don't need the little hooks on the motherboard, you can just screw directly down into the back plate of any AM4 socket motherboard. But they'll also fit many others, including AM2, AM3, FM series, so they're actually pretty useful all round. I've also liked the fact that AMD have included a braided cable with a black end, so you can actually hide them really well into your builds. If we move up the stack, we have a look at this. This is the Wraith Spire, and it's probably the most common one that you'll actually see out there. Now they supplied this a lot with a lot of the Ryzen 5s and the Ryzen 7s as well. Um, and it is a bit of a jump up. So we're now looking at going from the 65 TDP of the Wraith Stealth up to a 95 TDP on this cooler. As far as profile, these run at a 68 millimeter in height. So they're not very good for some of the smaller form factor builds, but they actually do produce a very good cooling solution. One of the other differences is that even with the extended aluminium heatsink, you've also got a copper plating at the bottom, which only improves the cooling further. The fan on this is exactly the same size, and so is pretty much the shroud that they give you. But instead of having the five fins, you actually get the seven, which is going to produce more air. And it's also reasonably quiet, just like the Wraith Stealth. It also comes with a braided cable with a black end so again you can hide this in your system and it comes with the screw mount technique so you can go straight onto the back plate of your motherboard. Moving up from the Spire we actually have another Spire so they seem to do two versions of these this is actually pretty much identical to the original Spire but this one comes with RGB it's the same depth it has the same TDP of 95 it also has the copper plating on the bottom and the screw mounting fitting the fan is exactly the same, but on the shroud, instead of just having a plain shroud, we actually have a ring of RGB lighting. Now this is just your standard four pin RGB, so it can rotate through different colors or you can set it to a single color. And it gives you a pretty cool halo on the builds. I actually like using them because they do look pretty cool. I do generally find they're a little bit rarer than some of the others that we've got here um, because of the processors that they actually came with. And I actually struggle to get hold of one of these. I don't tend to buy many new Ryzen processors because there's plenty of stock out there on the second hand market and they tend to be far cheaper. But I did manage to get this one with a Ryzen 7 1700 that I bought second hand and it came in the box. So I actually did pretty well on that one. Moving up even further up the stack now, we've gone on to what we call the Wraith Max. Now this is where they actually change design completely and we're now looking at more of the premium kind of fans. The fan itself is pretty much the same size, it's a 92mm with 7 fins, 
but they've changed the style of the shroud so now that it's square. The heat sink is also now using heat pipes and we have up to four heat pipes on here with a quite a wide copper plate and they've also made the heat sink square as well. So this is where it's going to get a lot of its better performance from. Now I can't really find the exact specifications of these but we know that they'll suit any 105 watt processor so anything up to that you should be fine. It also comes with braided cable as well as the black four pin end and they included a little bit of RGB on this too so you do have a twin halo system around the shroud although the fan doesn't light up but you can then adjust it with two different mechanisms. They do actually do two different versions of these. This one you can have the two different plugs so we have an ability to set the colors of the RGB with USB and then it will actually remember it so you don't need the cable anymore or you can plug in a four pin RGB cable and then customize it with any header or controller on your motherboard. Unlike the others it doesn't use a screw fitting it actually uses a clamping system so you do need to leave those hooks on the motherboard and you simply clamp it down onto those hooks like you do with any traditional AMD cooler. The last one that we'll be taking a look at is this. Now this is my favorite and it is the highest premium one that they do. This is the AMD Wraith Prism. Very similar to the Max in design. It's square, it has a square shroud and a square heatsink. The copper plating on the bottom is much larger than the Max and it also does have the four pipe heat pipe system. The different the major difference between this one and the Max is that the actual fan will light up as well so we've got RGB in the middle and we've got RGB on the outside. Now the fan itself is just a four pin RGB so we can rotate through colors we can set it to a specific color whereas the actual halo system on this and the little AMD logo that light up run off of an ARGB system so you can actually have a bit more of a rainbow effect and it can be customized really well. And like I say this is the fa my favorite out of all of them and it's not purely because of the performance it gives because they do perform quite well it's more around the looks. I tend to find that if you've got a system with these in, and I have built systems with these, in particular our editing rig in the tech lab um, has one of these, and it just looks really good on the system. It makes the system look quite premium. The Wraith Prism also has the ability to set the RGB on there two different ways. So again, you can use the RGB USB cable and a specific piece of software, which you can download from AMD, and that way you can set the three different colors and three different schemes of the RGB lighting or you can use a four pin RGB cable. Now I'm a bit of a fan of these coolers I think they're a fantastic upgrade from what we used to have many years ago where you would simply just get a square block with a tiny fan on it and that's what you would class as a stock cooler. I wouldn't necessarily run an overclock system on these because I don't think they generally will keep up with that kind of thing but if you're running things in stock they will actually suit most builds. If you've got one of these, let me know in the comments what you think about it. Did you upgrade from it? Did you see any thermal issues or not? Um, tell me which one's your favorite. Which one would you actually use on your build? Like this video if you like this kind of information. And I'll see you again soon.